especially after these last couple of school years. I'm sure a lot of you have seen many of these kind of articles floating around, giving you tips on the kind of leadership skills that you need right now or the top five skills to help you lead into the next school year. But ultimately, which one is right for you and your team? My colleague Beth and I want to help you think about how you and your team should be finding the right leadership competencies for you. Hey everyone, I'm Justin Toomer from Education Elements. This is our second video about leadership competencies. We wanna really break that down for you. If you wanna understand why it's important to even think about leadership competencies right now, check out the first video in our description. And I'm Beth from Education Elements. One thing that we've learned as we work with leaders in schools and districts across the country, and even within our own teams, is that these types of competencies are really helpful in clarifying what it is you need to do to do your job. What we've learned, though, is that in order to really develop these competencies, there's a deeper level of analysis needed. At Education Elements, when we start the process of self-reflection and peer evaluation, we look at the essential elements of leadership and group them into competencies. We think of these as the skills needed to really master leadership competencies. For example, in this Harvard Business Review article, one of the competencies that they're measuring is the ability to shape a vision and share a vision that's both exciting and challenging for your team. Sounds great, right? However, how does one actually get that done? How do you measure success? How can you make sure that you're progressing to actually making sure that you're bringing that competency to life? Something that we're thinking about in education elements is actually about breaking that competency down into actual essential skills and practices that leaders need to be following in order to bring that competency to life. Let's return back to that competency from Harvard. If we were to break that down to some of the essential elements that you might need, a few that might pop up are having a strong personal vision, being able to lead from within, from an authentic space, facilitation, being able to manage and create spaces that are psychologically safe for your team to collaborate and engage authentically. And then also understanding relationships. At the end of the day, Everyone wants to be able to contribute to the human story. And it's important for us as leaders to find the right entry point for them to do that. So thinking about all of these different elements that we have now, breaking down these larger competencies into real, actual, visible skills and practices that can be improved upon, it's important that we find the right mental model to help us understand how as leaders to find the right skills that we need for the right challenges that we're trying to solve. For us, our team has found it's best to learn from the best. And ultimately, we wanted to learn from the best puzzle masters to help us put the right practices forward. All right, let's break down two approaches that different puzzle masters utilize to solve some of the most challenging puzzles known to man. Our first approach is the Jigsaw Master. We're gonna learn about the Jigsaw Master through Karen Puzzles. She is a popular YouTuber whose videos get millions of views as she breaks down some of the best strategies that she uses to solve the most challenging jigsaw puzzles that she gets. When utilizing the Jigsaw Master approach to solving complex problems, it's important to understand first that you do have all of the pieces necessary in front of you. You just need to have the time and attention to put all those pieces together and make them fit. And so the kind of leadership elements that a puzzle master would need to solve those kind of challenges, and you need to be patient to find the right pieces at the right time and to understand that that's going to take time. You need to have a high sense of adaptability. You may have an initial approach that you want to take, but based upon how the pieces are shaking out, you might have to change that up. And then ultimately, you need to have a, a level of inquiry that allows you to have the curiosity and to be able to take those risks to move a piece that you're not sure if that's where it should be, but ultimately you're gonna find that that's exactly where it needs to be in the end. Those are a few of the essential elements that a jigsaw master might need to solve their challenges. The second approach that we might take to solve a complex challenge is that of a diagnostician. And there's no better diagnostician to learn from than Dr. Gregory House. On the show House, they are often presented with a case that has a 
very impactful problem with only one tiny little symptom to help them understand where that problem is coming from. And so House and his team had to put agile processes in place in order to test, take in that data, and then ultimately retest until they found the solution. And so the kind of skills that a diagnostician might need when faced with a larger problem with little information, you might need learning agility, you might need to persevere, and then ultimately have a strong level of data fluency to take in that information and process it quickly. In order to create a culture that supports these elements being learned and scaled across the organization, it's important that you have a holistic view of all of the elements that are in front of you that are needed in order to be successful on your team and that you understand how to utilize and mine for the right elements at the right time. Let's consider your competencies as a leader. Let's go back to that HBR article that we shared earlier. My ask for you is to pick a competency from the list and name all of the leadership elements you relied on this past year. What were your strengths? Drop your answer in the comments and we'll be sure to respond. The next episode in our series on leadership competencies dives more deeply into the what of leadership competencies and what it can look like in your school district. Make sure to subscribe and click the bell to get notified when it comes out. And if you like the content we shared, please like this video. See you next time.